Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Saturday Smackdown. Pardon me, no, Sunday Smackdown. Will I ever kick the habit? I don't know, but uh, keep watching to find out, I suppose. No. This is going to be number number five. Yes. We've done a double card Smackdown already. This will be the second one, which should be a lot of yes. fun. All right, map number one, as usual, will be Deccan. Me and Maito are back. This time with Tit and Conqueror, and uh, hopefully better audio, as you can hear. This time, got the uh, studio mic set up instead of a headset one, and uh, we will be able to have some crystal clear visuals and audio, because uh, now recording with a much higher bit rate as well. So, this should be the usual SmackDown quality that you're used to, but we are ready, and this time everything is back to normal. This will be Tit versus Conqueror. For SmackDown number five, double shipments. Just to recap, for those that missed last week, all the shipments that they send, they will receive twice. So three villagers will be six villagers, 700 wood will be 1400 wood, and we'll take a look at their decks and see what they have in store for us in a bit. But it looks like here we have Tit playing as the Germans. Going to be sending his Explorer, uh, by the looks of it, straight onto the plateau, coming back for 40 coin, and uh, is going to be ignoring the trading posts for the time being. Seems like they're quite good, but uh, maybe... Oh, no, he's going to head that way now. Going to build trading posts, uh, but first wanted to use his crack shots and get that out of the way so it's recharging whilst he's building it. Conqueror, however, straight to the trading post here. He is playing as the Ottomans. Going to be using that starting wood to get the trading post down and get that shipment curve nice and rolling. We'll take a look at their decks in a moment, but uh, Maito, I suppose I'd ask you what you think of this matchup, but I already know your answer will be, I have no idea interjection because double cards changes absolutely everything we know about the game. <laughs> well, you'd say that, but we've actually seen this exact matchup already on this exact map, nice. on this exact patch. Oh, baby, what happened, so... Maito? Tell us about it. I have no idea, but... Um... <laughs> still, still, we've seen all of this before, but we still have no idea. But what I, I, I do want to point out that uh, I think that Conqueror is actually going to be going for some kind of Silk Road build. If you look at um, his crates, he's uh, left 20 in each of his starting crates, or a minimum of 20 of each of his starting crates, aside from the Gaia crates, which would be unaffected by Silk Road. So he will be getting those extra resources when Silk Road does come in uh, sometime down the line. And those, uh, that Silk Road will be a lot more effective with um, 1,400 and, uh, what is it, 1,400 and 1,200 resource crates um, in the Colonial Age, or potentially 2,000 resource crates in the Fortress Age, so... Yeah, that's true. How much extra, so when these crates, normally, they've got 20 left in them, what does that jump up to? Another 25, isn't it? A adds, adds another 25, yeah. Okay, but that will be 50, because Silk Road is twice as effective. Oh... Oh, I suppose it I, might be. <laughs> you hadn't thought of that one, had you? Yeah, and it affects the I trading had... posts as well. I imagine, though, that it, that it would affect uh, the crates. We'll find out when he sends it, but uh, looks like three villagers is going to be his first shipment, and Silk Road is yet to come. Let's take a look at his deck. Firstly, though, a forward settler. What do you think of that? I think there's a tower rush coming. Oh, Which baby. means uh, this game could be over very fast. Yeah, as uh, we discovered in the previous one. Let's see how this turns out, uh, because uh, it turns out Germany quite good when they can receive four Ulans in Age 2, along with whatever they sent. In the previous game, we saw Kinesi uh, send five Doppelsodners. No, pardon me, it was six Doppelsodners, because three times two is six, along with four Ulans, and that uh, really made a bad day for Prince of Kabul, since there was so much siege, but uh, I think Ottoman probably better equipped to deal with that than uh, the Sioux, so we'll see what uh, Conqueror has in mind. He hasn't seen this outpost yet, but that trading post and that explorer probably will see it once it's built, uh, certainly the explorer as it comes back towards his base, but there is a forward tower up, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, also just looking at Conqueror's deck, he only has three Hussars in... What oh, is wow. it? Uh, it's got 70 uh, okay. resources in, in It does. It does crates. add 50. Yeah. But yeah, Conqueror only has three Asars in his in his deck, so no five Janissaries or anything like that. Ouch. Um, <clears throat> looks like he also uh, elected to age the Quartermaster instead of the Bishop, which is... It'll help it's... a little bit more quickly against this Tower Rush, I suppose, which is it's good. Okay. But Ottoman um, don't have the Bishop, Mito. Don't worry about that's it. That's right. I, why do I always forget about that? Because anyway. uh, they're, well, they're Ottoman. They're uh, they're Turks, right? Like they don't uh, they don't have bishops in uh, in Islam. It's true. It's true. But uh, yeah, so he's got a barracks going up now, but I'm not sure how how effectively he's going to be able to deal with this Tower Rush, which he still has yet to scout, as far as like 
No, you might have walked past it. I'm not actually certain. He may have seen. Oh, there we go. Copying the Kinesi build. Uh, five doppel. No, six doppel suddenness. Why am I getting confused with this? Plus four alliance approaching the base here. And uh, as you said, there's no shipment that he can send to deal with this. Villagers now going into the town center. Let's take a look at his units in queue. He does have Janissaries available, but uh, I think those Ulans, uh, they're going to be able to snare the Janissaries in place. And those doppel suddenness. Yeah, they're going straight for the racks there, uh, waiting for units to pop out, and then they'll just jump on top of it. Minutemen being called. Villagers trying to, again, to combat their 700 coin is going to arrive. It's a, well, it's going to be more than that. It's 1400 coin plus however much more Silk Road takes effect, but it's not going to be able to be able to defend against the Doppelstodders. Janissaries have now came out. Uh, the Doppelstodders are on top of the Minutemen there. Janissaries trying to get back a little bit. Looks like he is handling this okay. Remember, there's Town Center Fire here as well, but uh, there's another shipment. 16 crossbows and 4 Alan. Sure, he can hold the Doppelstodders, but surely that's GG. <laughs> um, don't speak too soon. There is a six of star shipment available for the Ottomans oh, as that's well. That's true. That's true. <clears throat> and there's no military building up for Germany yet, so behind this, he, he only maybe what? has. There's no military. This was just. <laughs> what? This is just. No, shipments. but actually, actually, look, look at, look at Tit's deck. He has, um, he has five Ulans and four Lanch connects actually. Oh, that's in his deck. Shipment. So I like that. he does like have that. a couple of decent follow-up cards, but he's not going to have any supporting units from any military buildings coming out anytime soon. So a six of sharp, a six of sar shipment. <laughs> could actually be pretty effective against this crossbow mass. Uh, the rack, however, is going to go down, uh, so no additional Janissaries will be coming out. I don't know if he really had any popping out anyway. Oh, look at like that band of Lanshkinets. There we out. go. The Hussar shipment has arrived. It's on top of the crossbowman. This is good, but look, the Lanshkinets are on the way, but maybe it's just a little bit too late. Six Lanshkinets will absolutely wreck the cab, but they're not here to do it just yet. Have arrived now. Rip that one Hussar there. Hussars need to get out, but uh, they are engaged by Ulan. So I uh, have taken down most of the crossbowmen here, which was their function, but now those Lanshkinets going to clean up. There's so much siege here. Uh, they're going to clean up this town center. No more military shipments for Conqueror. Uh, he does have, you know, a, you know, three trading posts, which is good, but without a military building or any more shipments to send, there's, I find this going to be very hard to, to deal with. Yeah, it certainly will be. And ten Ulans coming up behind this, so <laughs> just a string of really, really powerful shipments. And... Uh, Nothing else to this build, it seems like, but it does, doesn't look like it needs anything else anyway. Yeah, those crates. And the town center, the town center will be falling shortly. Those crates are loaded with resources, but they're all, they're just for show. One villager will be, or actually, there were several villagers that managed to escape. A set of military buildings on the right side, but really not going to be accomplishing too much. Damn, Tip just says, "Damn, that's that's." <laughs> Nothing but, look, he even skipped uh, his villager shipment as Germany. He just didn't send anything at all. He, he, no settler wagons, just started with three dops, eight crossbows, four lunch gannets. Yeah, didn't even construct a trading post either. Just fully committed to uh, going all in with this, this rush. And even if Ottoman had more unit shipments, like the only other unit ship you could have is five Jans, right? Eventually you're just going to lose to four unit shipments maybe. So, interesting. Someone's been talking to Kinesi about what's uh, what's good or bad in this game mode. Uh, might tip might just clean here. We'll see if Conqueror has something up his sleeve. But yes, it seems that uh, these are even more refined. Well, this particular build a bit more refined than what Kinesi showed us. Maybe they have been talking. We'll have to see. Stay tuned. Up next will be game number two. Nice try from Conqueror, but uh, it seems anything that is even just a little bit slow, is not going to work. You need military shipments and timings and to be aggressive, it seems. Unless the map's got water and schooners is a thing. Yeah, it seems like aggressive play is definitely the way to go, at least for the moment. Uh, he did manage to hold the first push relatively well, but it wasn't enough. Okay, Tit going to go with the Sioux. Yes. This is a, a pick that didn't work out for Prince of Kabul against Kinesi, but we'll see if Tit has some kind of plan in mind. Yeah, I want to see what he has planned. France, we didn't see this this civilization come out yet either, but I think should be quite good. You know, that sort of fortress age, uh, still plenty of shipments that would be really good there. Uh, I wonder, though, if there's anything colonial. Pioneers seems like it would be a decent shipment for France <laughs> in certain situations. <laughs> Especially on this map. You've also got the Nootka. Oh, man. 
Yeah, that upgrade is Pi cool. Pioneers plus Nuka and Wilderness Warfare. Yeah, you're you're going to have like a thousand HP. Oh, <laughs> would it really be a thousand? Surely not that high. It's uh, certainly very high. It might be very close. That's absolutely insane. Uh, let's click into this and find out then. Kind of doubt that he'll have Pioneers in deck, but it would be fun to watch anyway. I'm just going to say it in the chat there. Make sure that uh, he's aware. Maybe he'll ungrip <laughs> and pop it in his deck. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to game number two in this best of seven series. Tit versus Conqueror or Dictator. This will be Cascade Range. The score is 1-0 to Tit. Starting in the north of the map in the color blue, we'll begin with Tit. He won the previous game as Germany with a pretty offensive tower rush. Pretty, pretty unstoppable. Uh, looks like Conqueror didn't have... Uh, that anticipated at all and ended up losing there. Uh, but this is game number two. Let's see what they have in mind. For those tuning in, this will be the double shipment smackdown. Every shipment they send, they will get twice. Three villages will be six villages. 700 wood will be 1,400 wood. All of these things. But uh, wow, tits off to a flying start. That explorer uh, running across the map like an absolute madman. <laughs> yes, picking the 50 trade. Sunflower worth 50 food. And uh, by the looks of it there, Tit did the hard work. Uh, pardon me, Conqueror doing the crack shot, but Tit just going to be claiming that. Halfway across the map already, this guy's so quick. But uh, yes, in the south, we do indeed have Conqueror playing as the French. We'll take a look at their decks in a moment and see what they have come up with. But uh, 50 food here, just small treasures on this map. Not anything too hard to pick up. I think that favors the Sioux player's war chief a bit better since he can move really quickly and just grab all the muskrat treasures. But equally, Sioux war chief really wants to see, you know, big beefy treasure guardians that he can convert. Uh, nothing like that here, just jaguars. So I guess that's sort of what he's looking for. But uh, small treasures, not going to be overly important in this game. Let's switch on over to shipment sent and we'll be expecting those to arrive uh, pretty well in a little bit. Hunting dogs now being queued at the market for the French player. Yeah, not a whole lot going on just yet. No, it's hard to it's hard to say because we have absolutely no idea what will happen. This is we've taken the game and completely thrown it on its head. All of our game knowledge is definitely different uh, or not relevant here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, certainly. It uh, looks like the uh, Sioux explorer is just going to be harassing the French explorer, chasing him back home. Um, Seems like a good <clears throat> use of the. Uh, he's Sioux he's already. Here. Yeah, he's already scouted, like, pretty much the entire map anyway, so might as well just get some damage and maybe uh, try and force the Explorer further away from his base to deny some scouting maybe later or something like that. Um, yeah, all right, looks like shipments are on the way, so just looking a look at Conqueror's deck, he does have native upgrades. A significant lack of military shipments in his deck, actually. Uh, three Hussars, and then, uh, you know, a handful of shipments in Fortress, and that's all he really has for military shipments. Yeah, uh, and things like Advanced Arsenal, I'm not sure how that really works when it's doubled, but, uh, we will, uh, find out, I guess. I think it will just do the same sort of thing, or the same thing it usually does, because it says set Yeah, I don't, I Unless, don't like, think it will do much, really. I think it'll just, uh, finish be the researching same. a technology, say military drummers, and then it's like available underneath the first military drummers, and you can research it twice. Uh, <laughs> I, I doubt it, but maybe. Yeah, interesting. But still, Akadi's decided to include. I think Conqueror, being mostly a treaty oh. player, has gone with a different selection of cards that you'd find from a normal supremacy. Why? What have you seen? Well, I'm just taking a look at, at Tit's deck now as well, and he's got the. Um... He's got a wide assortment of military shipments, including six coyotes in age one and three grizzly bears in age two. And may and even the, the ten outlaw pistoleros, which will become twenty outlaw pistoleros, I suppose. Will they so he's uh it part takes a hundred population to send that shipment. Well, uh, thankfully Sue is not uh, short on population. <laughs> That's true. That's absolutely nuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Sioux starting with Max Pop is definitely going to be helpful for a shipment like that. I think then maybe Tit's plan is just to continue the success of the first game uh, with an all-out aggression. Conqueror, though, waiting to build a native trading post here, but is going to be found and harassed by the Sioux War Chief. I think, though, he should be fine to get it up. Crack shot, going to take down that Grizzly and then get back to work there. But some sort of native agenda on the cards for Conqueror. I wonder how effective that will be. Let's take a look. It's a Nootka Settlement. 
Yeah, it doesn't seem like it will be super effective. I mean, just th just think of the the build limit on natives. Uh, what can you build for Nuka? You have you can build, I believe, like twelve Nuka or something like that, and you just look at almost any military shipment, and it's like just significantly more than you could train from any natives, any single native settlement. But uh, that being said, looks like Tit actually skipped his first shipment again, went up with the fast age to age two, I think. Uh, maybe he didn't go with the fast age. I'm not actually sure. I have to check that. But uh, just sending eight axe riders. Yeah, okay, it was fast age. Just sending eight axe riders as his first card. And uh, going straight for this um, for this trading post. Um, I don't know if Nutka will pop out in time to save it. And if they do, Nutka don't have the greatest multiplier against cavalry for hand infantry unit. It uh, might not even really Nuka, there they are. matter. Well, five Nuka popping out. Yeah, they've only got eight times. Or it's, it's ten damage times two, which is not as good as a pikeman here. And I think these, you know, there's plenty of axe riders. They should be able to clean these up pretty quickly. Uh, thankfully, though, they're quite cheap units. But, uh, yeah, not overly effective there. The axe rider is going to clean it up and then go straight back to sieging that trading post. And that's going to be the end of the Nuka. There's an extra one there just popping out. Just gonna pull that axe rider and uh, clean it up. Trading post does yeah, go down. but at, at least at least behind this, uh, Conqueror does have a better economy. Um, he's got almost a seven villager lead, uh, approximately, as a result of having sent that six CB shipment and Tit not sending a shipment all at all. However, uh, no military building just yet. It looks like he's got this uh, Nuka settlement back at, at home sort of queued up gonna be losing a cdbd these axe riders as well but the six of sars oh they could have got a counter raid on a villager there but unfortunately no and here's the 20 pistol arrows <laughs> 100 populations worth of stuff uh yeah tit now sitting at 146 population out of 200 at the six minute mark that's very impressive uh these pistol arrows are gonna make short work of the hussa of course 30 range damage each is quite a lot there uh now streaming towards the french player's base uh he sent his six hussa card or three hussa card rather uh and that's gonna be enough to force away these axe riders here but those pistol arrows uh they're on their way let's take a look at conqueror's death. yeah and i don't know has. if there's well, he doesn't have any other military ship available. I don't know if there's much of an answer here. Nuka settlement not even going to go up, going to get denied by these axe riders. It looks like. Yeah, this deck uh, just okay, seems no, a bit not quite too slow to really uh, do. He it does. I mean, he does have CDB still, which is something he has going for him at least. Yeah. yeah. Looks like that Nuka settlement going to get uh, tidied up here. Uh, it is, however, going to draw away these units, which don't have particularly high siege for a while, so they're going to be stuck sieging this. Uh, having said that, though, it's half HP and nearly uh, down, and the war clubs are arriving. They can finish that up pretty, pretty quickly. They've got a much, much better siege here. Going to catch those three Hussars. Look at this army. Like, it's Just look at the military unit population graph. It's absolutely ridiculous. Conqueror's deck's just far too slow for this. Yeah, calling GG. And that's going to be all she wrote for this one. P Tip picking up a second game off the back of something just very, very aggressive. Not even three shipments sent. And uh, that's going to be the end of this one. Just so overwhelming. Just trying to abuse those early shipments as much as possible. And Conqueror's just no, 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 not really anything in his deck to allow him to... It's very late game focused, isn't it? It's got a lot of upgrades in it uh, compared to a usual deck. And uh, very few military unit shipments to hold any pressure. Like, eight crossbowmen would have been brilliant in, in this deck, but uh, not available. Yeah, it's just... Uh, military shipments, again, just proved to be very, very strong in this game mode. Maybe part of it is just the the unexpectedness of, it, of like, the just the sheer number of units that arrive. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. It just seems really, really strong to just continue... But normally... With uh, military mili shipments and being very aggressive. Yeah, military shipment is usually... Uh, you'd send it for that immediate bonus, like you might be defending or you're about to go and attack. Uh, whereas, say, crates are much more valuable, but there's just not enough time to get the value out of them. You have to gather them up, then you have to train the units. Like, the, the effectiveness of the military shipment and the immediacy of it is just doubled, like, from how good it usually is. Mm -hmm. Wow, I'm good at maths. When you can send, you are. when you can receive something twice, it's twice as good. That's amazing. All right, Isn't that incredible. I know. Who would have thought? Let's go into <laughs> game number three. Tit currently two, Conqueror on zero. This could be a quick and uh, quick and early smackdown, unless Conqueror switches up his playstyle here. 
We'll see what he has in mind. Tit, though, yeah, will have to pick the... his civilization first. So he will get the counter pick again. In a uh, similar fashion, I expect we'll pick something that can be equally aggressive. I wonder if we're going to see the Aztec uh, coming out pretty soon. I wonder if India is any good in this game mode. Their shipments are... They're decent, but they don't have a lot of military shipments, but they do have a lot of really good defensive options regardless. You do of, get uh, an extra villager with every shipment. Yes, that is uh, that is pretty good. Well, maybe not as good as extra Ulans in every shipment, but uh, it is going to be doubling part of their civilization bonus. What do you mean? Particular... You can... You can you can rush with like seventeen sepoys and two vills. Whoa! Two vills are a very important addition to that composition, mind you. They can steal the crates while you're under the TC. Spain coming out. This seems appropriate. Extra, well, Spain Spain's bonus is faster shipments, and when your shipments are doubled, that seems like a good pick. So Tick gonna be pulling out Spain here. Conqueror gets the counter pick since he lost the previous game. Okay, so this is a little bit interesting because. Spain, of course, is uh, on it only has melee unit shipments. So this is locking in your composition a little bit more as Spain than as other civs. At least if he continues playing in the similar vein to previous games, um, he'll be his army will be primarily made up of hand infantry and cavalry. That's true. Uh, assuming he gets to the fortress stage, otherwise it'll just be hand infantry. So conqueror could potentially pick something with a little bit more access to ranged units and maybe come up with an advantage that way. Tit, though, he could just not rush and instead go with the standard fast fortress. You could even start with an early market, right? You could uh, get a trading post at the start of the game like you'd expect, then build in a market. When you send 700 coin, you'd actually get 1,400 coin, so you could actually buy a lot of the food that you'd need to collect at the market and then just age up, you know, pretty much, instead of the seven, I reckon you could get up sort of six minutes 30, maybe seven rather than the usual seven minutes 30 time, and then, what, have four fa four falconets guarded by 24 pikemen, and you've got so many other shipments there. So I think the fast fortress would be really, really strong. However, we do see Portugal coming out. Kanisi absolutely smashed this map. Malaysia was uh, very, very good for Portugal with the schooners. Boats, fishing ships that train 80% more quickly and are 40 wood cheaper are definitely pretty good. They were streaming out of the dock. So we'll see if uh, Conqueror can pull that off. I'm not sure, though, that's a style he's overly comfortable with. Kinesi, obviously, very good at that. But uh, Conqueror, what do you think? Yeah, I don't think he's super comfortable with it either. Um, but it, it probably is a lot easier to pull off than the sort of standard water play on a standard patch. However, Spain actually has the option to go for water as well um, in sort of the same sort of style that Portugal does. That is true. Um, hmm. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to see if they choose to pick water decks or whatever. I, uh, I don't really see how much value Portugal has if they don't go for one. I suppose um, if you get to industrial, you're still going to have a very, very strong unit in the Jeanette Dragoon. But other than that, uh, your Fortress Age is probably reasonably solid. Your Colonial Age, probably not so much. So we'll see. However, eight crossbows and six musketeers would be quite good against uh, Spain if he chooses to go aggressive like he has been. That's true. Those shipments will definitely help counter a rush. I'm anticipating a fast fortress from Tits here, but uh, that would be different from what he's done so far. Maybe he'll just continue with the standard, uh, well, I say standard, but the uh, style that he's been going for so far, which is just really aggressive rushes off the back of double shipments. But uh, spawning in the south of the map in the color blue, we do indeed have Tit currently on two points playing as Spain. Explorer, by the looks of it, uh, has come across 90 wood treasure. I would expect him here to get that crack shot out. And then, uh, is he going to be building a trading post? Doesn't look like there's enough wood to do that. Just going to start with a house in the early game. But uh, maybe he'll, maybe that 90 wood treasure will change his mind. Perhaps he can gather an extra bit of wood. Probably not, though, since he's built the house. Yeah, the house is already finished, so that won't be a thing. But certainly still looking to get this wood, but just won't be using it until the Colonial Age, by the looks of it. But uh, standing nearby, uh, I'm possibly going to be getting that. But let's take a look at Conqueror. Here he is on the upper side of the map, in the north. The northwest. East. Yes. I can never get those right. Playing as Portugal, his explorer, picking up 35 wood, has found a couple of yaks. Tick going for the wood <laughs> treasure now. Sorry, laughing at the floor, Dave, again. 
imbalanced in treaty. Uh, <laughs> but perhaps not in supremacy. No, not in but in supremacy, just treaty. Sorry, Conqueror. He is quite good at treaty, of course. Arguably the best treaty player. Uh, unfortunately not working out for those treaty skills not working out for him in uh, this series so far but yeah I think uh, there's still time true his his decks have mostly been late game focused so it's clear that he wants to go to the late game he's got extra cards that you wouldn't usually expect he's taken out the cards that you would often well see in a deck uh, in favor of upgrades but so far that really hasn't been overly helpful uh, but we'll see what he has uh, this game available. Three settlers coming out for Spain, which is actually six settlers there. Let's take a look at the Spanish deck, Maiso, and uh, see what he has in queue. No schooners in here, but we do have Team Archaic Soldier training, which makes uh, pikemen and crossbowmen train 50% quicker. This will make them train 100% quicker, which in theory makes them train instantly, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, th this is a weird deck, actually. He's also got advanced stock in here, some warships and stuff like that. And a lot of military shipments in Age 2, but not much to speak of otherwise. So yeah, it seems like his plan is to play pretty aggressively in the Colonial Age once again. Um, Dictator, on the other hand, his deck is looking very unorthodox, to say the least. A bit more Kinesi-esque. He does have those, uh, those two military shipments in the Colonial Age, though, that he has sort of been lacking the last couple of games. And... Uh, yeah, so that option is available to him. Looks like there's a villager actually walking up to the top side of the map here, towards the pond, perhaps, or maybe some sort of side base. Um, it looks like it probably will be a forward base. Uh, Doc going down for Conqueror as well at home. So, hmm. Both players going up with the bishop. So that will grant them an extra shipment. Definitely valuable in the double shipment smackdown. But yes, Doc going down. Schooners has been the first shipment sent by Conqueror. So we can expect to see Doc's, uh, pardon me, boats streaming out of the dock. Definitely going to be strong. I wonder if he can pull it off and get to the late game, though. The last couple of games, he's not been able to defend. But as you mentioned, does have those two uh, military shipments there in the Colonial Age, which will be invaluable for defending. And an extra town center will definitely be helpful as well. But Tit, a very coastal villager here. Looks like it's getting in position to he, build he the He just dock. reset. He, he, just set, he just moved his uh, his water flag, actually, to this pond. Yeah. You got to so keep in mind that two caravel shipment is actually a four caravel shipment. Oh, so yes, you're right. It could it could take out this dock very very quickly or a um or a potential town center on the coastline. So this could be a uh, very dangerous Okay, Not going to place the town center on the coastline, but this dock is definitely in peril at the moment. He's also sneaking a villager down to the bottom side of the map to sneak up another dock it looks like. So even if he loses this top side uh, he will at least have water on the bottom side that Tit will not be able to easily contest, at least not until Fortress, when he has the frigate shipment available to him. Unless he chooses to construct a dock or something like that. Colonial so, Militia. Huh, that's pretty good. Uh, he's going to have a very, very strong town center. Remember, he gets two town centers, so they're now going to be 100% extra damage. And that includes anti-ship damage, so this should be fairly good for coastal defense. But at the moment, no military units here in base. But from looking at Tit's decks and the previous game, we know uh, that that's what he's sort of prepared to do. So preemptive colonial militia seems fine, I think, uh, in most circumstances perhaps. Not, but here, I think that's okay. Yeah, for sure. Um, Tit so far, just sending wood, training pikemen. Uh, looks like he might not send caravels just yet uh it's gonna be archaic infantry training do they train instantly off the back of that card yeah i believe so hmm i'm not sure okay it looks like they do yeah yeah but i don't know how valuable that shipment really is though like in terms of raw resource value in villager seconds it's not really all that helpful right it's maybe yeah. the equivalent of an extra barracks or two or something like that maybe i don't know it's kind of weird well it, it it means you can convert your crates instantly into uh into units that's true 
and uh, that's going to make it more valuable, especially when you get 1,400 wood crates. They're just going to spoil. Oh, we go. Four caravels. Four caravels timed with a push on land here. Remember, though, these town centers are double damage because of colonial militia. I'm not sure how it affects the Minutemen, but this is certainly going to be very, very good. Oh, the pikemen heading over to the dock here and going to be taking that down ASAP. The dock currently supplying 450 anti-ship damage because of uh, advanced dock that has been sent. That card uh, doubled as well. Holy shit. 450 is taking out a caravel, but thankfully the pikemen here are going to be able to take down that dock. The boats do come out, and now there's no damage. And these caravels are going to clean up the fishing ships and negate the schooners. Thankfully, though, these town centers uh, have absolutely incredible damage because of colonial militia that was sent uh, and can send Minutemen as well. Going to be able yeah, to clean however, up the shipment. You got to remember, though, that the, uh, the colonial militia town center is already one shot the pikemen without actually uh, uh, getting the doubled effect, so... That would explain why he's only got five villages in each town center. He knows this and isn't going to waste that's, it that's, villages. That's true, actually. I suppose you do need less villagers in the town center to get the same effect, which is good. Mind you, yes, these boats are being cleaned up, but they only cost 30 wood each because of the schooners. That's true, yeah. They're, it's not really that big of a deal, looks like. His four caravel shipment of his own has arrived, going to be cleaning up the caravels on land. But, uh, or sorry, on water, but at the expense of potentially his land economy, one town center down to half HP, no resources for Minutemen left. He's already called two of the smaller batches of Minutemen. So at least one town center going to be falling by the looks of it. Uh, but, uh, I mean, do you really care if you lose one town center when you've got 50 fishing ships? I don't think so. The town centers aren't overly helpful here. You're right, because there's so much fish in the water, and the the, fi the boats effectively train instantly. The villages are just not as nearly as valuable. But I think Tit does need to secure the land, uh, and then obviously he can uh, you know, actually kill all the boats or the docks. Or the anything. town town center might not be super useful for booming on land, but he's actually housed. He's constructing houses now down here with the settler that built dock down here. 16 but, crossbowmen. Uh, oh, 16 crossbows. So he did actually have enough um, population to get that card out. But uh, if he wants to send another ship into the moment, he will be struggling to do so. Yeah. But uh, it looks like the 16 crossbows will be enough to hold for the moment. Yeah, you're right about what you said earlier, that Spain can only really send hand infantry, which is what he's got, Rodelleros, Pikemen, and nothing really to complement it. So uh, 16 crossbowmen are going to be very, very effective against that and has managed to push him away. If you take a look at the recalculated economic unit population, despite losing that town center and uh, that dock and a lot of these fishing ships being destroyed, he's got 43 economic unit population here. Those boats are absolutely killing it. They certainly are, yeah. It looks like... One Rodolero did manage to scout that dock out a moment ago, so he knows that this is here. Um, not really any way to contest it at the moment, but uh, definitely something he can keep in mind as the game progresses. Uh, just looking at the resources right now as well, looks like both players are sort of gathering to age up. So we're going to see a game that's finally going to move beyond the colonial age at oh, least. Oh baby, here we go. This, this is the actual real first game. <laughs> the other two are just... Uh... Yeah, they just, the, the first two are just experiments, figuring out what works. It uh, looks water... like he's going to be rebuilding his dock up here as well. Water seems very strong in the double shipment patch. Uh, now it definitely does. For 60% increased gather speed on those fishing ships. Can we absolutely redonkulous. Meanwhile, Tip with his hand infantry, Pikeman up here sieging the trading post. Definitely a good use of the military unit's time since it's sort of undefended and uh, the town center standing underneath that seems very costly due to the uh, extra damage it's doing. Looks like the boats, oh look at that, gonna get a taxi up the up the coast inside the caravel which moves much more quickly to defend the, the trading post. Yeah, might let them get there a little bit more quickly. I feel like it was, uh, it could have been executed just slightly better, but uh, at the end of the day, the TP does go down. It uh, looks like mm, half a pikeman will go down in exchange for that. Uh, unfortunately for him, if he hadn't tried to ferry his, uh, his units across, he would have bumped into this outpost while it was still under construction. Would have been able to deny that. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> did not run into that as a result. However, he might spot it with the caravel here. Will be taking some damage off of the one outpost but should be able to escape relatively easily and repair that ship up at the dock looks like he is going to be denying that one outpost and the crossbows will now arrive at this outpost to apply some siege damage and then probably run away as they have no siege 
Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and he doesn't know what Tit's up to. He probably suspects it's an true. agent, but doesn't Could be Hussars be... popping out of this uh, outpost or something like that. What, for Spain? I don't think so. But uh, unless he's in the Fortress Age. Well, he oh, is now. Oh, yes, you're right. There could be Hussars popping out. <laughs> there they are. Okay. Oh, got a garrison in the, in the caravel, though, so he'll be A-OK -okay for sure. Uh, looks like one might go down. Nope. I thought I but... caught you out there. I, st I thought, right, there's no way Hussars will pop out of that. <laughs> Boom! There's Hussars popping out. Yeah, Fortress, Fortress Age politician bonus uh, isn't doubled, though. Looks like, though, with uh, some extra uh, units in this composition to aid the hand infantry, the Hussars going to be very effective against the crossbowmen here. Uh, and the Hussars, yeah, look, looks like they see the Hussars. They're going to want to get back on the boat and uh, garrison away from those units here. But uh, uh, now up to the Fortress Age. Tits. Oh, the town center. Looks like that additional town oh, center no. is going to get caught and go down. Yeah, but he came in at the right moment. Uh, Conquer is actually aging up to the industrial age already. Looks like calling Batch and Miniman just to hold this. And uh, it looks like he's going to be just fine. I mean, he lost the town centers, but again, who cares? So as long as you maintain one shipment point, you will be all right. And he will be up to the industrial age in uh, just under a minute. Yeah, and he's got two frigates. It uh, looks like, though, Tit has sent the frigate shipment, uh, spawning two frigates on uh, the top side of the ocean here. This is exactly what Tit needs to do. He needs to get rid of these economic units, catch up a bit, and the frigates seem like an excellent way to do that. Yeah, and uh, Conqueror doesn't have any additional warships um, in his deck, so he's not going to have his own two frigates to counter this or a six caravel card or anything like that. Um, what he does have, however, it's advanced is... Uh, he does indeed have advanced dock. And to three caravels to these two frigates should be okay with some decent micro in the town center fire potentially, but frigates of course have quite a long range. Town center might not be able to deal with that. Looks like Tit has constructed dock of his own as well, so he's going to be contesting the water with a couple of trained warships just in case he really needs them. And now Conquer up to the next stage, going to be placing that town center. This one will likely go up. Um, and... Uh, Looks like, yeah, he has those four heavy cannons and also a 12 El Medi shipment. Oh, baby. Could 12, be quite good. 12 El Mete, yeah. Well, for the price of 1,000 gold, definitely. Uh, Minutemen and Casadors here. A few Dragoons joining them to clean up these Rod Elleros. Uh, he's going to have a... It looks like though has a frigate of his own now. Uh, and he's going to be able to push away those two frigates. Remember, though, they can't really get very close to these docks since they're just so powerful. But they don't need to. They've captured most of the water and killed most of these fishing ships. But uh, oh, he's got two frigates of his own. Okay, that will be enough because these ones are slightly damaged. Uh, that second frigate going to be very, very helpful there. Yeah, it looks like he sent Navigation School, which actually lets you train your warships. In tandem with um, with Advanced Dock, it lets you train your warships nearly instantaneously and for a cheaper cost, so... Oh, that's pretty uh, he, good. Yeah, he will be able to quickly. defend his docks relatively easily against any further pressure as a result of that. Um, and looks like two factories have now arrived. Oh, here we Absolutely go. disgusting. That's such um, a <laughs> shipment. That's so, so dirty. It's so good. Um, do factories have double the gather rate just like mosques? That would be absolutely oh, that's, stupid. Let's, let's find out. No, they, they do not. Okay. okay. That would be absolutely stupid. That would be so disgusting that it wouldn't even be funny. Looks like they conquer his army pushing out here to try and get uh, blue off the water, but those frigates uh, are going to scare away those military units. They definitely don't want to be fighting the boats. Uh, has got a monitor now out of his own. Looks like that's going to be sieging the, the, the dock there. Two frigates pushing forward. I don't think blue can stay on the water very long. Not unless, he, if he loses this dock, certainly not. Yeah, it looks like uh, he definitely will be getting forced off of the water. Uh, four falconets have now arrived uh, somewhere at this forward outpost, looks like, along with 800 gold from Spanish gold. Uh, yeah. Going to be getting next to the coastline and taking out one of these frigates, potentially. Looks like he will be getting away, though. I love this. But... This, is, this is brilliant. Malaysia. What a map. <clears throat> Look at all these boats <laughs> and cannons. This is exactly what I hoped for when we, when we made the double shipments patch. Uh, take take no conqueror having to deal with lots of crossbows here. Remember they train instantly. They're just streaming out of the out of the barracks. Every time he has any resources, he can just sort of train them instantly into units, which is definitely quite effective for keeping the pressure up and keeping your units topped up. Yep. Another two factories coming out as well. 
So his economy is well and far ahead of Spain at this point. Just has to make sure he can hold on to the water. Uh, he is being pressured on the water on the south side of the map as well, but he does train warships instantaneously, so he should be able to defend that whenever he chooses to pretty easily. Yeah. Looks like those Falconets gonna eat a couple of monitor volleys as well and be going down pretty easily, unfortunately. A couple more, a couple more frigates coming out of the dock there. Uh, has well and truly captured this side of the map. I, I feel like he might have overinvested in uh, this water, the top water. There's a lot of fish, a lot of frigates and and warships that can't be moved to the south. Yeah, potentially could potentially be the case. But, maybe uh, but that's looks okay, like right? three caravels instantaneously trained on the south side of the map going to be contesting this one frigate. Yeah, that's true. They can defend these fishing ships here. Uh, three caravels should be able to take down a frigate, especially with their broadside attacks available, which will be the case. Uh, they're now coming in range to get set up. And we'll see the broadsides there. Yeah, boat taking heavy damage. That frigate going to want to get out of there. Yeah, but even if it gets out of there, wh where is it going to go, really? Uh, he can't really win the fight on this on water very easily. Um, Conqueror could potentially just chase him back to that dock if he so chose. Oh, look at this. These villagers trying to gather up that coin. But uh, Blue going to stop him there. There's eight, nope, they that got most gold, of it. Uh, yeah, that, that 80 gold might uh, just belong to Mother Nature <laughs> from now on. <laughs> we'll have to see Gaia villagers coming out to to get it. Oh, pikemen down in the south next to this dock. They're going to clean up this. Okay, a couple of military units coming out just before it goes down uh, to stop. The, the instant training boats are really, really helpful here. But that dock has been cleaned up. These pikemen, uh, lots of siege, able to, to, able to get that at really, really quickly. But plenty of boats now on the south here. Oh, a second frigate from Blue. Yeah, he does have two frigates out now, but I think uh, Conqueror might have enough to deal with this. Those additional warships he trained before that dock go down should buy him enough time um, Eight. to defend this and potentially reconstruct the dock. Okay, he's captured the south water as well. He's got lots of warships presence here. This I don't think he's uh... getting back on the water and lots of warship presence on the north as well. He's got a very so... powerful economy. I think Conqueror's... I think Conqueror's got this on lockdown now. There's not a lot he can do to lose this, I think. This this outpost shipment is, a, is another case of of too efficient. I think uh, you can only construct, I think, um, seven out of the eight <laughs> outposts. Because <laughs> of the so. build limit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you spend... so this, one, this one outpost wagon will be waiting in reserve for when, for when one of these outposts go down. That's quite funny. That'll be an idle villager he has to deal with the whole time. This is, Indeed, this is not how be. the game was intended to be played. I uh, Yeah, I think it's safe to say it's not. <laughs> uh, but, okay, looks like... <clears throat> looks like uh, Conquer has finally stabilized, though, off the back of this, training batches of 15 Hussar and several Casadors at the same time. Not going for genitours, uh, surprisingly enough, but this is likely just as effective when you're ahead by 80 villagers. Wow. Wow. Pioneers. Pardon me, schooners. Absolutely ridiculous. Uh, instant it is a fair and balanced card. Four factories, four falconet shipment, eight outpost shipment. What are we watching? That was a pretty good game. It, yeah, it definitely was. It's definitely a lot closer than its predecessors. Hopefully, uh, the following games are just as good. Yeah, Conqueror putting a point on the board. Looking pretty good. Uh, I want to take a look at the four factories, his economic units. Pardon me, his all resources gathered graph. Look at that. Gets to the industrial age and just the climb is crazy. Very balanced. Very, very balanced. Fun and balanced. Fun and interactive gameplay. Well, it was actually pretty interactive, that game, to be fair. Yeah, but... that, there was a lot of back and forth there. And uh, there was a time, I think, where Tick could have uh, taken it. You know, he's got those... Perhaps if he hadn't started with instant training uh, infantry. Uh, I wonder what would happen if he'd just gone straight for, like, 16 cross, sixteen pikemen, followed by, you know, Rodello Rodel shipments, and just stream siege units into his opponent's base. Uh, having said that, though, his opponent did get uh, the colonial militia which probably would have been quite effective against that um mind you though they already instant kill pikes as you said it's hard to know but an interesting yeah, build it, from tip 
it uh it probably was okay. He didn't exactly have the population space to send a military shipment at that point in the game, so Colony Militia having the extra damage on uh, town centers, it definitely helped him with the caravel, so I saw the town centers take out one caravel they likely wouldn't have taken out without that Colony Militia card. It does add anti-ship damage onto that as well. That's true. Um, and, you know, it also just helped him later on when he had to call Big Batch of Minutemen to defend anyway. So Colonial Militia is just a solid card all around. Regardless of how many times you send it, its tactical tactical value is good enough. Um, and yeah. A good game. All right, then. Let's head on out into game number four. The score is 2-1 to Tit. Yep, and the next map will be Kamchatka. It looks like Conqueror has locked in Germans, and uh, Tit will need to choose what he counters that with. Germany has proven to be a very powerful sieve. In this uh, in this game mode, unsurprisingly, That's true. I wonder if it will be a tower rush or if we'll see some sort of fortress oriented gameplay this time. Yeah, I wonder if Conqueror will just you know he was defeated by Germans earlier. He could just decide, I know, I'll just do what you did to me earlier. That seemed pretty effective. How do you deal with that, Tit? I wonder. We'll see what Conqueror has in mind. Let's take a look at his decks and find out whilst Tit is deciding what civilization he should be playing. Standard one v one is the name of one of his decks. Could put the five Ulans in here, maybe take out a uh, Fortress Age shipment. He's probably building a deck, I suspect. He's got three, two 3v3 decks and a 1v1 deck there. We'll find out in a bit. I'll come back once uh, he's greened in and see if he's made an you... additional deck. How do, you, how do you actually pronounce this card? Lanschknet? Lanch... What, the four Lanschknets? Yeah. I think that, it's... Is that... I don't know. I think it's Lanch... Lanskinet. I don't know. Is the Whatever, answer. good enough. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, we know what it is. Could potentially throw that in there as well. Seemed uh, reasonably effective. I just think a normal fast fortress would be good. Or do you think uh, that would just lose to a tower rush? How would you beat a tower rush? You're going to have like six stops and four ulans in your base just after you click the age up button. Okay, here's how and... you do it. You send 300 food as your first card. You get up to okay. Colonial ASAP off the back of that. Maybe age up with the Philosopher Prince. I don't know. Okay. Because it is cheaper okay. now on SmackDown Patch. Okay. Right. You just get up to Colonial ASAP. You then send 700 coin as your second card and build a market. Uh, gather up the coin and buy food with the extra coin that you don't need. And uh, basically have all of your villagers on food the whole time. You click up and hopefully get to the Fortress Age at 5 minutes, fifth, five minutes 30, 6 minutes, something like that. And then you send... Ah, yeah, what does Spain send to deal with dops? That's, uh... <laughs> you can send 12 pikemen. Yeah, it's not even like... You, you could send lancers. They're good against infantry, but not doppelsolders. <laughs> no, they're not good against doppelsolders or ladge connect. So... Yeah, you could send falcs, but... I don't know, um, they'd be undefended That Sounds risky with the uh, potential Ulan mass. Okay, you, you got me. <laughs> yeah, it I'm seems sure. a little bit seems a little bit problematic. Okay, I'm excited to see how Tit handles this then, but let's take a quick look at Conqueror's deck and see if he has indeed built an extra deck. Yes, he has. We've got Smackdown, uh, which is functionally or very similar to his standard 1v1 deck by the looks of it, but uh, with more Colonial Age cards, uh, and he's putting Mercenaries in the uh, Fortress Age because obviously they're really, really good. Uh, but let's green into this, and we'll take a look at Spain's deck uh, once he has sent it. I feel like he's gonna switch off of Spain. I don't know. Doesn't I just I just can't see why you would why you would want to play Spain into this matchup. Okay, he's not gonna bother yes. with that at all. Right, Iroquois probably is much better suited to dealing with this. They've got Tomahawks, they've got Aena shipments, and they've got things that will actually be helpful here. Let's get into this. Let's get into game number four in this best of seven series. The score is currently two one to Tit. But I think now Conqueror knows how to play this. He saw how effective the tower rush was in game number one on Deccan and uh, is now going to be playing Germany and has the potential to do that himself and abuse the fact that uh, doubling the uh, German civilization bonus is quite good. Getting twice the number of Ulans is quite effective. So we'll see how Conqueror plays this. I think, though, that he's going to be able to bring it back up. I think he's going to be able to win this one. I think Germany very, very strong. But let's not count Tit out yet. Let's start with Tit, actually. Here he is in the south of the map. In the color blue, playing as indeed the uh, the Iroquois. We'll take a look at his deck when it's available, but the Explorer 
Going to head straight towards the middle of the map by the looks of it. There are goats on the way. I'm going to come across 35 coin. Quite an easy one to get. Not overly value. He might even just skip that. No, he's going to go straight for it. Not going to use his nature friendship ability by the looks of it, though. He wants something a bit higher value. Nearby is 90 wood, though. That's going to be a nice treasure. Conqueror, on the other hand, hasn't gone for it, but does find 85 wood on the other side of the map here. So that's how that's going to roll. They're not near each other at the moment. Different locations. No contentions just yet. But Conqueror in the north of the map, in the color blue, playing as the Germans. Here he is, building a house to start with. Not enough wood for a trading post. No extra buildings here. Although there is a villager on wood for Conqueror. I imagine that will be switched yep. off on some um, food in a moment, though. Yeah, I feel like that's a mistake. Or oh. maybe it's not a mistake. He's uh, with the 85 oh, wood. Yeah. Maybe he's going to be dropping down another house or something like that, which will prevent him from getting housed by that first uh, villager shipment. That is true. Or maybe a market. I don't, I don't know. We'll see what he yeah, gets to do. Yeah, he's continuing to chop wood for the moment. Looks like it is going to be a market. So, you see, I, I don't think he's realized that he's actually going to house himself here. So by spending more time investing into this market and getting a hunting dogs upgrade or something like that, he's going to have less villagers in queue when he does manage to send that card. Unless, uh, which, he, unless he's... Uh... He actually might have enough... He might have enough villagers that it doesn't matter. He could queue up to 13 right now, so he'd be totally fine. Yeah, and then send the shipment on top of it, so overpop, so to speak. Uh, we'll see what he does, but certainly a market, a nice uh, a nice pickup from that uh, wood treasure that he found. Tit has also picked up a wood treasure. He got 90 wood and is picking up 40 wood there as well. He, however, hasn't done anything with his wood, but uh, can do when he goes up to the colonial age. Shipments should be available. There should be incoming Interesting. Now. He's got the, uh, the infinite 400 crates in his uh in his deck oh wow which is of course 800 crates that's pretty not good. sure that that's better than six settlers okay no it is going to be six villagers coming out here uh they are not settlers because they are of course native to this land so ignore my uh my it's fine misspokenness what what's the word i'm looking for whatever <laughs> two Looks settler like he wagons aging the conqueror Looks like he is actually aging up to colonial age as well with the messenger politician. Um, so he's not actually going to have a shipment available once he hits up. Also not going to have a TP potentially when he gets up, but he will have one shortly thereafter, it looks like. Yeah, it looks like uh, Explorer coming in now. Going to build that uh, trading post. Just about to hit 200 wood. Explorer arrives at the socket just in time and is going to plug in a trading post foundation right there. To, up oh, to the actually, next stage. Conqueror he... actually aging with the Quartermaster, not the Bishop this time. So he will be aging with 400 wood, not a shipment. Um, might have been a misclick going with Habit or something like that. Um, but also could potentially just be to ensure that he doesn't die to a rush or something along those lines. Could well be. He knows what has happened in the previous games, right? He saw how aggressive... Conqueror was. Maybe he just wants the 400 wood to be safe, uh, get that military building up. Equally, though, you can use it to build a trading post, which is going to give you constant XP. Whereas yeah. the shipment is just a one-time this... thing. This Trava is taking a rather roundabout path towards uh, this side of the map. Stay probably hidden. trying to avoid being scouted. Yeah, and also um, probably just wants to avoid potentially getting taken out by an early German shipment or something like that. Um, not really any risk of that at the moment since Conquer is not even age two. It's actually very close to the base now. Where is it going? I hope it doesn't get shot down by the town center fire. That is definitely. I don't know, but it's definitely definitely in line of sight at the moment. Looks like that explorer has thrown himself to hand combat. He's going to be getting into uh, combat with that Trava. Don't think he'll be able to do too much about that, but he'll. Uh, at least alert Tit to the fact that that Trava has not been placed. Looks like Tit actually sent um, the crates of uh, 800 resources, which is, of course, actually 1,600 resources. It's a very high-value shipment. I think he's actually... I wonder if um, if he actually sort of put that Trava in line of sight intentionally so that Conqueror, or, yeah, so that Conqueror would react to it you know, potentially overreact with yeah. a military shipment <laughs> like he is right now. Well, behind this, he's actually just going to be going straight 
to the fortress age off the back of this shipment. And actually, you know, this this uh this crate shipment, this mixed crate shipment, it's a lot more effective than other crate shipments in this game mode because this early in the game, when you send like 700 coin or 700 wood or 700 food, that swings your macro so hard in one direction that you actually can't spend those resources effectively. But this crate shipment, it's uh, a lot more balanced. You have 400 wood, 400, or wait, is it 400? It's uh, you... 400 wood and 400 coin. Either way, you have you, a you lot of stands. Yeah, you you have a lot. You you can spend those resources more easily because it's a lot more uh, organic sort of macro. Yeah, you know, it's more distributed, right? You're, you're not stuck with one type of resource that you can't spend because you've just got too much of it. So you're absolutely right. Iroquois shipment's pretty good in that case. But uh, Wall coming down now, he saw those shipments that came out. Second of Wall coming down as well. I don't know if that will go up in time. Yeah, that but, is... But uh, yeah, actually, it he's got a lot of vills committed to that, so it looks like it might actually go up. Yeah, and he's gotten stuck on this longhouse anyway, so he's going to be killing that before he moves on into the base. Those are some quickly erected defenses for sure. It looks like the sixth Doppel Soldier shipment has arrived. Um, that will add some extra siege onto these walls, but Tit is almost up to the Fortress Age now. What is he aging with? Looks like it is the Wise Woman, so we'll be getting a buttload of crates dumped underneath the town center along with the free travois does yeah. also have two shipments available but and with these walls he should be able to gather them up and hopefully spend them as well quickly erecting the walls looks like these defenses are done but they are ep walls they don't they do have half health so uh with an army of doppelsodners and uh things like that they're gonna go down very very quickly uh is however gonna be killing this trading post first seems like a good idea but uh, at least he's got time to gather up those crates right he's building a second war hut that's gonna be able to go up in time uh, he's gonna build another wall just behind this first layer seems appropriate and uh, hopefully he can actually spend these resources and then uh, should be okay what are the Fortress Age shipments? Tit is in the Fortress Age now, remember. Oh, look at these. Mostly just... Uh, look at all of these, like, I guess, mercenary shipments that cost gold, which are going to ship you twice as many. These these kind of shipments in particular are very, very strong because they cost the, the same amount they usually would, but you get it twice. So you're getting an insane amount of units for, for basically not what it should cost. So Tit loading his deck with those seems very, very good. Yeah, however, he he looks like his uh, his age three shipments are going to be reliant on this national unity card, which looks like isn't actually going to have its effect doubled as it sets the cost to a certain amount. It doesn't actually reduce it by a percentage, uh, which, you know, sending that card so that you can send the other cards is uh, all right, but it's... It still seems like a good build. Order, it's right? not... It, yeah, I mean, the cards seem super strong, but national unity itself might be sacrificing a little bit of value because it's not getting doubled like the other shipments that's true but there are so many of these other uh shipments in his deck i think that setting the cost to 250 coin instead of a thousand is is still going to be absolutely worthwhile since of course yes he's not getting the double value off that one particular shipment but uh getting the double value off mercenaries for the that are even cheaper is definitely very very strong yeah it will take some time to pay off though as uh, he will need to send a few shipments for that to really take effect. He yeah, uh, does and... have one available now. He is sending something. Not sure exactly what it is, but we'll find out shortly. Uh, Conqueror as well is now advanced to the Fortress Age behind this. Uh, we'll have access to those insane German shipments as well. Yeah, he's got um, Hessian Jaegers, which takes 52 population, and Black Riders yeah. 54 population to send. Also going just going to be throwing down a wall on the top side just to secure these resources a little bit. Um, so a good adaptation for him. Looks like it's going to be 2,000 gold plus six Ulans coming out here. Um, <clears throat> that will, of course, be pretty good if he wants to go for any mercenary shipments or anything like that. Yeah, And uh, honestly, be... 2,000 gold, just a solid card overall. Horrendously overpopped because of it, though. That's That's very true. He needs the I cannot argue with that. Palantine Settlements card would be good. Uh, might or, or a thousand wood to just spam all of the <laughs> houses down. Well, it looks like he's just gonna. He, he doesn't really need to have a lot of bills on gold right now with that two thousand gold shipment in. So he'll just be gathering or, or wood with the majority of his villagers for the moment. 
dropping down houses as the resources arrive. Uh, it's just going to be sitting back waiting for that next shipment, and which you know is still a little ways away. Yeah. On Donga support arriving, which gives mostly well twenty eight tomahawks and a thousand wood, for the mere two hundred and fifty gold price that he's managed to make it come down to, pretty good. This definitely seems like a solid shipment. Oh, actually getting New Year Festival as well from the market. That's the uh, the tech that gives you the big button at the market that gives you. I'm not sure exactly how much experience, but it gives you some experience. You can actually see he's sitting on three shipments right now. So oh, baby. apparently, That's... quite a lot of XP. That's a lot of shipments. Yeah, I think it's a thousand XP. But either way, three shipments is absolutely insane here. But Germany is Germany. There's a lot of Ulans there now approaching these forest prowlers. Tomahawk's coming in, gonna go into no scaring away the Ulans there. Doesn't look like he wants to commit to that fight. Has seen the Tomahawks and thinks, okay, that's a big army there. I think though, Conqueror is very well set up. Uh, pardon me, Tit is very well set up for going into this late game. He's got tons of shipments available off the back of the big bu big button upgrade at the market and can send those incredibly cheap mercenary shipments that uh, he set himself up with the national unity. So uh, considering everything's doubled, I just think this was a very well done and executed build. Yeah, so far it's looking pretty good. And with the extra shipments he still has stacked, in the next minute or two, he will have a very scary army for sure. However, that being said, Conqueror has a shipment on the way as well. Likely a mercenary shipment, judging by his population. Could it be the 26 Jaegers? Could be very, very effective against this uh, heavy infantry is, yeah. composition. 26 Hessian Jaegers. That's definitely going to be good. You're absolutely right. And behind this, Conqueror has a superior economy as well. 34 uh, villages to 26 and two trading posts to boot. Uh, possibly going to be getting stagecoach in as well. I wonder if uh, you should upgrade them and just leave them on XP because of the double shipments. Uh, hard to know. But uh, yeah, Germany's definitely got a good game plan here as well. Jaeger's very, very strong. Here they come. Yeah, it looks like, uh, I don't know what card this is. Seneca support has arrived, giving him <laughs> a lot of extra buildings and a lot of forest prowlers as well. Uh, will help him contest this a little bit. Unfortunately, the explorer has gone down. Yeah, it looks like he wants to get out of here. Jaeger's 40% ranged resist. Look at that, the forest prowl is just melting away. Uh, looks like the Hussars, pardon me, the Ulan, uh, find a war hub, quickly take that out. They're not going to be able to get on top of the military units, which is a good thing for him at the moment, but uh, being pushed back by the Jaegers is going to... Is it, what other shipments does he have? Is there any cavalry ones in here? There's uh, the T Tuscoraro support. I don't think I've ever seen this card before. That will give him uh, 18 Kanya and 4 Medicine Men. Uh, that could be effective against the uh, these units here. He certainly got a shipment available thing is he's popped he's got no population to send anything he's gonna have to lose some units here before he can send another shipment so sure he has all these shipments stacked but he can't send them yeah Jaegers that's true improved pushed. mercenaries oh wow that seems worthwhile he's got so many jaegers that uh, how much does that look got... at their stats 40 percent extra stats they and are... getting counter infantry rifling right now those tomahawks are absolutely gonna melt they're going to yeah, absolutely shred through these units. Uh, I, I think G Germany is... I Honestly, I thought the better build... Okay, the horsemen have arrived. Can, you, can they get on top of the Jaegers? Trying to find their way through the forest, but this looks really, really hard to get a good surround. The Ulans have really high HP. Uh, sorry, attack damage. They're going to try... You know, the, the, can you just cannot find the, the Jaegers in the back? Tip resigns, and that is going to be it for game number four. Bringing the score up to 2-2. Two, two. I think Conquer has finally adapted to the format and uh, has evened up the game. I liked Tit's build a lot, but uh, clearly... Clearly not as good as I thought it would be. <laughs> it turns out the uh, the German shipment bonus is just too strong. Yeah, six Ulans for free with every shipment, and uh, double Jaegers is, is very, very good, yeah. Yeah, it certainly is. Take a look at the post-game graphs here. Germany had the stronger economy behind that as well, reflected in the stats here. Let's take a look at uh, military unit population. I think the, the Jaegers, you can see them spiking there. Absolutely enormous amount of population to send, but uh, finds a way. And he had Black Riders behind this as well. He's still in his deck, right? He could have sent those. Yep. And uh, with the improved mercenaries, that would have been a very, very difficult composition to deal with, especially... Especially as a, a civ like Eero that is very reliant on infantry to be successful. 
uh, those Jaegers would have been very, very difficult to deal with. Yeah. But uh, that's going to be it for game number four. Let's head into game number five. Both players have played Germany now, so that is out the way. Neither of them can select that civilization and will hopefully level the playing field because that seems to clearly be the strongest nation to pick in the double shipments format. Okay, so Conqueror will select his civilization first since he won the previous game. I'll paste the map pool. We'll be playing next on High Plains. Lots of trading posts available here. Uh, looks like Conqueror is still deciding what civilization to pick here. Well, he he picked Spain. Oh, I don't know if he's locked that in yet, but... Let's see if he's locking Spain, and then Tit will select his civilization afterwards. Let's take a look at his decks and see if he's prepared anything unusual for the double well, shipment Smackdown. There is a deck called Smackdown. Yes. ATP could be good on um on this map. Trading posts will, of course, be very, very cheap and very difficult to kill. So. Wait, they'll be 40% cheaper, so 80% cheaper. They'd cost not very much wood at all, 40 wood each, and they'd have 100% extra hit points as well. That's absolutely ridiculous. That's absolutely ridiculous. Okay, double Spain. Spain mirror on high plains. Do you think you'd go for it at all? Do you think... I, I don't know. I feel like whilst they're... Actually, the trading posts are just so good. How could you not go for it? Mind you, though, you could just ship, what, eight pikemen for 16 pikemen, do some sort of tower rush, be very, very aggressive, just ignore their trading posts before they can get going, destroy the town center and spawn points. Could, could potentially be an option. It's hard to know because we haven't explored this format at all. <laughs> so the players are just doing whatever they feel like. Yeah, I, I feel like feel like ACP would pay off very, very, very quickly. Um. I just, could be wrong. Just so quickly that you probably just can't skip it. Yeah, well, I mean, like, if you're if you're Spain and, you know, experience contributes so heavily to sh your shipments because uh, your shipments are cheaper that's true. than other civilizations, if you have more trading posts than the other Spanish player, um, you should be able to catch up in shipment progression relatively easily. Okay. Maybe not even fall behind. So. so we'll have a big fight over the trading route by the looks of it. But ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Sunday Smackdown. This is game number five in a best of seven series between Conqueror and Tit. We have here a Spanish mirror. Tit has played Spain in a previous game, but he did not win with Spain. Therefore, he can continue to play them. Conqueror will also be playing Spain. It is a 100, uh, 100 wood and 100 coin start. So no, no potential here for an early trading post, but maybe that's okay since both players want to be sending ATP anyway. Uh, Going to be leaving that coin crate on the floor. It is not useful at the moment. We'll gather up the coin later on. But Tit uh, picks up his coin crates in base by the looks of it. Sorry, his coin treasures instead of getting out onto the map. Meanwhile, though, uh, Conqueror is going to be 130 food treasures. So Sunflower's treasure right there. Going to pick that up. And that's why you want to be skipping those early treasures nearby get out onto the map for the bigger ones that your opponent might be able to contest the ones nearby uh not so valuable but uh, picks up 130 food gonna be pleased with himself there <clears throat> we'll take a look at their decks in a moment looks like that war dog though he managed to find him attacking the treasure and uh it's forced him all the way back home so half ex half health now for what's his name bernal di usara yeah so al although he did manage to get the big treasure off of uh Ignoring that, uh, he is going to be harassed a lot now. Explorer is now here as well. Yeah, very low um, HP. And that, that will give uh, that will give t a little bit more control over the uh, these treasures. Line, right? Such, as, yeah, the trading post line and the treasures as well around this area for the next couple of minutes. But yeah, actually, maybe more importantly, is the trading post line yeah, will that... be more easily controlled. Looks like uh, both players have selected decks as well. ATP is in deck for both players. Nice. Yeah, ATP available for both players. That was a really clever thing to do. So Actually, just send the war dog out straight into the middle of the map. Find the explorer. I'm, get I'm him. Gone. Sorry, I'm just looking at the population. It doesn't look like Conquer is actually sending three settlers as his first shipment. Yeah, he's not sending anything. Tit three villages here, which will actually be six. But uh, yeah, what is he? What is he thinking then? Just save the shipment. It must be ATP coming in. That's, it's but, in his deck. Why would you include it if you didn't intend to? Unless, actually, you want to make your opponent think you might send it and have the potential for it. But there's, yeah, there it is. ATP coming in as the first shipment here. Conqueror, though, very low HP explorer uh, due to going for that Sunflower treasure and his opponent's war dog finding him. But uh, it is available now. Looks like he's heading up to the top of the map to build uh, the trading post up there. His opponent... Yeah, he also... He hasn't started aging just yet, but... Um... <clears throat> 
tit, you know, just sending ATP right now, potentially, maybe not going to send it at all. Uh, and off the back of this, if tit does choose to send ATP, uh, Conqueror will have a bit of a head start getting that in. However, he is going to be aging slightly slower uh, as a result of not having those additional six villagers. That's true. Uh, it looks like Tit is going to actually be saving the shipment. And uh, probably going to be doing something very aggressive, knowing how Tit has played this series so far. So, do you think he skipped three villagers just to get ATP sooner, to get a head start on this lo on this on this route, since it's just so important? Or do you think maybe his explorer got uh, damaged a little bit and decided, okay, I need I need a head start. I can't get away with three villagers. Yeah, that war dog trying to harass the. I think though, now that the ATP, look at that, five thousand hit points and twenty five ranged attacks. So, uh, that's going to scare away that war dog. Thing is though, he knows exactly where he's going, and the war dog's moving up the up the route. He knows he's coming here to build it. Uh, this is this could be sketchy. Thankfully, though, just one war dog I don't think will actually be able to kill that explorer, but he's going to take it to very, very low HP. Tit not sending ATP at all. Minutemen being called. Wow. Interesting. I was thinking, so he's going to be going for the villager here, I suppose, which uh, should be quite effective because that vill's going to be a long way away from finishing that TP when it gets here. Explorer going to come in to snare it as well, so it's not going to be escaping. And that's going to be a big blow, actually, to Conqueror's early economy here. Um as he only has uh, the 10 villagers, or 11 villagers now, yeah. with the um, when fall of that that villager. He does have a lot more shipments available, though, than, uh, than Tit does. Tit aged with the Philosopher Prince, it looks like, and uh, Conqueror aged with the Bishop, and also has these uh, soon-to-be three trading posts up. Yeah, this one, though, is being sieged. That's going to go down. Didn't manage to uh, get it. Might not, might not go bit down. He just oh, trained a war dog from his explorer, so he will be able to at least contest uh, the siege here. Yeah, that's true. Uh, looks like the explorer should be able to finish that off. Uh, where did that vill villager escape? This villager that built the trading post in the south there uh, managed to escape. Managed to finish building the trading post. The village, the, the minutemen, are uh, not going to be as effective. But I think it may have... Do you think it was worth it? He killed a villager and delayed the t the trading post, but it's going to get finished here. I feel like the Minutemen possibly should have hung out nearby just to stop the foundation being completed by the Explorer or something like that. But uh, ultimately, it looks like Conqueror is going to get that trading post. Uh, 700 wood arriving for both players here. Let's take a look at what Tit's up to, though. 1,400 wood on the floor. He also sent a ton of coin, and he's going up to the Fortress Age with that coin. So going to skip ATP, but is going to do something in the Fortress Age. Yeah, behind this, though, of course, that is giving Conqueror complete control over the TP line. Uh, ten settlers now finally arriving for Conqueror. We'll tie up the economy a little bit. Tit, however, could choose to send ten, villager uh, ten villagers of his own, which uh, would, of course, keep the economic lead in his favor, at least until Stagecoach is researched at some point in the near future. Looks like he's going to be building a Ford outpost as well, so definitely going to be aggressive in the Fortress Age. He knows that he has the tempo advantage with this investment into the TP line, although that investment really only cost him like 200-something wood. <laughs> <laughs> and a shipment. And a shipment. Um, I and think he's... at this point, though, it's safe to say that, that shipment, or the, the shipments are probably in favor of Conqueror as a result of those TPs. That is true. Um, he did skip his villager shipment for it, but uh, has caught up with five villager ship. That's shipment. true. He's, he's going to be a long way away from Fortress Age, though, just looking at his resources. It looks like he just Maybe Q... Oh, no, okay, Stagecoach is in now. But yeah, he's a long way off of getting the food uh, to age up. Actually, does he have units in Q right now? He does. He has Hussars in Q. So he doesn't actually know what Tit's up to. He might cancel those Hussars once he sees the age up from Tit. We'll see. Yeah, there's Tit's age up there. Lancers in Q and Skirmishes from Tit at this stable in Rex. Looks like he's not going to cancel the Hussars. going to continue with them. But uh, Tit is, however, going to come in with the Hussars that he's trained in the Colonial Age and a few War Dogs as well. Yeah, Season it looks like those Hussars, those Hussars will be enough just to defend uh, this early pressure. Don't know about fighting the War Dogs here. He's got his own dogs coming in, however, so he should be all right. And he'll be aging up off the back of that 1400 food shipment. He's got his explorer nearby as well, so can train more dogs of his own. Looks like it's dead though. Yeah, but f fighting fighting this is risky though, with uh, potential reinforcements coming in. Four falconets out now as well. 
Uh, I'm going to be making short work of this middle trading post. Actually, other trading posts as well. We'll likely pick that up for himself once the uh, smoke has cleared. Yeah. But Conqueror now aging himself. And he's going to build that. Seems like a good place for that forward outpost, as you can make use of the Falcon at siege damage, pick up a trading post of your own. Thing is, though, destroying these trading posts, they're, they're, only, they're, they're so effective. 5,000 hit points for 40 wood is just a bit silly. But I suppose uh, four Falconets is uh, enough to contest that. And if you build them immediately, and then your opponent doesn't really have the opportunity to replace them, then I guess it's okay. You can't let your opponent have all these trading posts, but it does seem like all this effort to take these down when they're just so cheap. Yeah, it looks like he's gonna be coming in with the 16 pikes as well with those falconets are sieging. Get some damage onto this TP, potentially force him to stop sieging that one, although that one's gonna go down at the moment. Um, <clears throat> we'll also see the Spanish gold on that outpost, so he knows that something a little bit greedier has come through. Um, and it looks like he is almost up to the Fortress Sage, has to be careful not to get caught here. And he has uh, almost three shipments available to him once he hits up here. How much gold do you get from Spanish gold? So it adds... Eight, 800 okay. per shipment. Because my thoughts were it normally changes it to 400. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then yes, I suppose it... Oh, it adds it twice. But then the shipment itself is doubled as well. So is that 1,600? No, it's not. It's just 800. No, I I had the same thought process as you at first, but no, it's only 800. Okay, that's still really strong, though. Like, it's, uh, it's a shipment with a lot of long-term value in an ordinary game, and now it's doubled as well. Uh, so it is a bit slow. Hopefully he can get away with it. I think, though... It looks like he has gotten away from it for the... Or away... Yeah, he's gotten away with it for the moment, for sure. Yeah. Um... Okay, so Falconet's... Oh, he's, he's choosing to leave. I guess he's done a little bit of damage here, and now he's concerned about uh, Conqueror, of course, in the uh, Fortress Age as well. Something... You know, he's seen that powerful army. Lots of Hussars there. And some uh, pikemen and musketeers, war dogs. If four falconets of his own arrive, which they do, there they are. Doesn't want to be uh, standing outside the town center where his opponent has lots of line of sight and can uh, get into that falconet war, that snipe war. Did a little bit of damage and has thought, right, I'm, I'm happy with that. He's now going to leave and perhaps uh, go back to sieging the trading posts, right? Try and get, get this uh, control of this route again. Well, yeah. And, uh, yeah, but, but behind us, I feel like. Tit's actually ahead, I'm pretty sure, with, uh, as a result of the Spanish gold shipment. Or he will be soon once this TP goes down. He'll probably pick up this TP for himself, uh, mitigate that economic advantage. And then Conqueror's shipment advantage is only going to last so long. Okay, Spanish gold of his own coming in. Seems Looks like, like he's going to be dealing with the um, siege of his trading posts by sieging trading posts himself. Yeah, seems fair. And if you can't defend your own, if you can't defend your own, siege them. Is that the phrase? Yep. That's the well-known phrase, yeah. Yeah, totally, totally that's the, the well-known phrase. Swiss Pike. Uh, Whoa, <laughs> look at it. There's that's so many a scary of shipment. That, that's, that's a scary shipment. Okay, tons of cavalry here. Looks like, oh, the cannon's just setting up here. Uh, do manage to snipe oh. one of the cannons off the blue player, but those Swiss Pikes just uh, going to be dumping damage everywhere. Hussars on Lancers isn't ideal, but there are Dragoons behind. All, all, the of, the, all of uh, Tit's Falks are down. There's still two Falks up for Conqueror. Oh, shit, you're right. But there's uh, a lot more units left, it looks like, for Tit. So, even yeah. though those Falconets have gone down, Conqueror is going to be losing his whole army behind this, it looks like. Uh, those Swiss pikemen, really, really strong. Yeah, I think, like, normally when a shipment arrives, yes, you have an edge, and that's good, and you want to take the fight immediately, and you want to push. But uh, when it's double Swiss pikemen, it's just... That edge is so much higher that in that moment where they've arrived, you've got the bigger army, and your opponent, you know, is still perhaps waiting for their shipment to arrive. He just had so many units in that instant, he was able to really, really take out a lot. But uh, four Lancers arrived. They're going to deal with some skirmishes in the back here. Oh, pardon me. Nine Rodelleros, which is 16. Going to be good against these uh, cavalry. But the spot yeah, is looks, still alive. Looks like a tough spot, though, to try and uh, defend this. Does clean up most of the cavalry, but there is, of course, a giant batch of reinforcing Lancers coming in. Uh, Conqueror has another shipment on the way, I believe. I'm not sure exactly what it will be. Uh, probably 24 pikemen or something like that. 
but I don't think it will be enough. I think uh, off the back of those Swiss pikemen, Twit has uh, gained a possibly gain women, gain women, gain game, gain. I can't speak. He's won the games. He's won the game so easily. I can't even speak. <laughs> yeah, well, there's 2,800 resources sitting on the floor outside of his town center, uh, most of it of which is wood. Oh, we see 12 pikemen. I thought those were Swiss pikemen for a moment. But so, look at these reinforcing Rodelleros and Lancers as well. This is just not going to be enough. There's so many blue things here. Yeah, and they're certainly a lot stronger than uh, veteran pikemen, so... Um, that being said, I mean, they're, they're doing all right, but there's still a lot of Swiss pikemen here. I don't think he really has anything that could possibly beat the Swiss pikemen at this point, aside from town center fire, which will take a long time to work their way through uh, these hand infantry units. And there's still a lot of reinforcing units coming across the map as well for Tit now arriving in the base. Yeah, it seems like Conqueror wanted to get away with a thousand woods, and that's a really, really strong shipment, but you just can't gather up these resources. I think you just have to keep sending military. And uh, when those Swiss Pike arrived, and in that moment where, where he had so many extra units, he took that fight in the middle of the map, which I think was game-defining, and uh, off the back of it, pushed all the way back to his opponent's base, and then stopped him from gathering the resource crates that were being sent. And as a result, there's just nothing left for Conqueror to do. Tip yeah, absolutely. So... If we do this again, Mito, do you think it would be more interesting to ban military unit shipments? Like, how would that affect the format if we just said, right, you can't send military unit shipments, or you can send a crates and upgrades and things like that? I wonder how that would change it, because it seems that the swings are so large when the, sh when the military units arrive that, uh, that it's just, just, it just seems like it's too large. Or maybe the solution is don't play double cards. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. I mean, yeah, it, I feel thinking. like, but it does seem like something that um, lose its uh, novelty over time. It's okay. Most most smackdowns will be standard sort of supremacy, uh, and I would like. I would urge everyone. I'm going to head on out of this game. Let's get into the next one, which will be match points for Tit. If he can win it, uh, he'll win the smackdown and win himself fifty dollars. But uh, if you want to vote on SmackDown, if you want to see something a bit more standard, or if you want to see something a bit more wacky, join my Discord, the SmackDown Discord, which is the same Discord. And uh, in one of the channels, you can vote on what SmackDown that we should be playing, because uh, I've posted lots of different ideas. They are just ideas. I'm not committing to any of them, even if they are the most thumbed up, but it's definitely a helpful indicator. Basically, there's a bunch of different SmackDown ideas, and you can use Discord. You can react with emoji to the uh, different ideas, and I'll get a good indication of what we should do. At the moment, there's two formats that stick out to me. There's double town centers. So players just play ordinary supremacy, but they start the game with an additional town center. And the other idea that stands out to me is players start the game with a fort wagon that can be built in age one. There's a number of other interesting ideas, though, and uh, in particular... Uh, if you want to suggest things, that's definitely the place to go. I'm always on the lookout for standard ideas. Ideas for supremacy where things aren't changed very much. You know, we did that quick search simulator. Those kind of ideas, right? Where it's still just normal supremacy, normal Age of Empires 3, but uh, a twist on sort of the settings, so to speak, as opposed to the format. Yeah, that one was definitely a lot of fun. <clears throat> um, okay, looks like Pitt has locked in India one of his uh, trademark civilizations. D haven't seen India yet in this, in this format, so not certain exactly how strong they are, but they could potentially be quite good. Yeah, it seems like the map that if you were going to play them, it would be this map, right? Yeah, Thar Desert definitely uh, lends itself to a civ like India that doesn't rely super heavily on natural resources, especially hunts as there are not a whole lot of hunts in your map, or in your map, in your town's town, in your town. That's what I want to say. <laughs> in your town center. <laughs> They're literally inside it. You can train here at the town center. No. Uh, Russia coming out then. Okay, another civilization that seems quite good on uh, a map like Tar Desert. No trading posts. Uh, fairly low hunt. So a fairly aggressive map here. Let's click into game number six in this best of seven series. <sighs> It'd be interesting. He says as he yawns. Oh, that's so interesting. 
I haven't. Uh, I have not slept That's very true. much. I'll let you off. Yeah, last running, night. So you're running on. I don't know how you do it and why you do it. Like you, you say, yeah, I'll be there at thirteen GMT, even though that's like five AM for me. <clears throat> it wasn't five AM. It was six AM. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whoa. I uh, better get my facts right. But uh, yeah, thank you very much, Maito, for being here. Can we get some love hearts in the chat for Maito uh, for making SmackDown happen? And uh, for making two SmackDown happens, this is a good chunk of your day, actually. We've done uh, that SmackDown earlier. Kinesi vs. Can always get out of bed for AoE 3. Absolutely. And this SmackDown, Tit vs. Conqueror on Tar Desert. Ladies and gentlemen, this could be, well, it is match point for Tit. Currently on three points. If he wins this, he wins the SmackDown and earns himself $50. But uh, Conqueror, let's not count him out yet. Still potential here to win playing as Russia. Let's start with Conqueror. He needs to win this game to keep going, and I really hope he can bring it up to 4-4. That would be, sorry, 3-3. That would be an awesome series if we can bring it down to the final game. I really like series that go all the way, but uh, here he is in the south of the map in the color teal, cyan, light blue, whatever it is, playing as Russia. Explorer heading out onto the map nearby. We have 10% decrease in train speed i don't think that's something he'll be overly interested in but if he continues on this trajectory might say we do see 90 wood it's a pretty good treasure 30 food up to the north there tits however playing as india in the north of the map here nearby has 55 coin has chosen not to go for that it is safe in his base can come back for that later elephant number one hasn't really found anything and there's not anything nearby 50 wood a bit further out but uh, the other elephant going for 60 food uh, from two panthers. Not a bad treasure considering the area damage there. Picks that up. Does cost his elephant about half just over its HP, but uh, is a nice pickup for the Indian player. Looks like they Yeah, conqueror. it's also en route to bump into this 90 wood. It uh, is. Potentially. Yeah, he's heading that way. But uh, no, it looks like he is going to take a oh. slight detour. Oh, it's going to be close. Here we go. It's going to come down to it. I think the elephant should be able to reach that in time. Uh, actually, maybe no. Oh, here we go. But get it could you. get the stomp. Could get the stomp. Stop paying attention. Stomp. Nope. Okay. Right. Picks nope. It up. Ninety wood does go over to conqueror. But uh, as a result of that, he knows that his uh, elephant on the other side of the map will not be contested if he to go for any additional treasures. Uh, not that it really has much opportunity to do so, as it's already taken fifty wood and has uh, roughly half HP. Um, nonetheless, it's uh, still valuable to know where that uh, explorer is. Or potentially could be valuable. All right, looks like uh, players should be selecting decks soon. They are receiving their first shipment, so this is where things start to get a little bit interesting. Yeah, uh, look looks it. like Dis neither player has sent just yet. Yeah, okay. Looks like uh, the Russian player's deck has been selected. Distributivism is uh, really the only interesting age one card that adds 1.25 to wood trickle, so it'll actually be 2.5 wood per second, uh, which is pretty good since it costs no population. That's that's pretty cool. In the next age, though, fairly standard things that you'd expect in a normal deck, except uh, these are going to be particularly good, as we've discovered in the double shipment SmackDown. Five Cossacks, four Cossacks, 13 Strelitz, all of which will be doubled. They require a ton a population well the strella certainly <laughs> and also boyars that's going to be really really strong uh since it's already quite good and just doubling it makes it even better there we've also got sevastopol blockhouse changes build points by 50 percent as to walls and forts and town centers so that would be doubled to a hundred percent and because it's build points they're decreasing it actually means their buildings these these buildings that it affects will cost zero build points and they will build instantly in fact Mito. Uh, do you want to explain exactly how that works? Because it's not just instantly. There's another... Uh, oh, we have a treasure contention. Looks like it does go over to Conqueror. But yeah, actually, this uh, this shipment is uh, a, definitely a unique shipment in this uh, game mode. Because when a building reaches zero build points, that means you can place a building, have it construct instantaneously without actually having to have your villager th there to place the foundation. So if you really wanted to, you could place a wall across the entirety of the map and not have to construct it, and it will just instantaneously appear. So there's some really interesting stuff you could potentially do I think with... you mean uh, broken. Really broken stuff you can do with instant... There's some rest. really broken stuff you could do with the instant walls, for sure. You could uh, potentially just wall in some units, uh, wall them out of the fight or something like that. 
Yeah, um, oh, that's going to be insane. I really, I, I'm interested to see if he can send it because it is still, you know, functionally nothing. It's not like it's, uh, you know, ten mm -hmm. Cossacks that it's, hit the board immediately. It has a lot like of that. has a lot of tactical value, but not a lot of uh, resource value. That's true. Just to uh, just to clarify how it works. So when you make a building cost zero build points, it doesn't need to be built, right? Well, build points means, like, how long does the villager need to be standing there to construct it? If that's equal to zero, then the villager does not need to construct it, is pretty much how that works. But, yeah, Sevastpol is in his deck, and uh, looks like Rush has gone up with the bishop politician. He now has two shipments available. Actually going to be pretty dumb, oh, too, no. if you it's can build a... The, the quartermaster. Uh, sorry, he hasn't aged up at all. He's about to get okay. to age two. But he has, it... he's not sent any shipments. Rush has completely ignored the shipments. <clears throat> oh, okay. So it looks like uh might be sending a lot of military shipments early then, potentially. Yeah, he's popped. I was going to say... Um... <laughs> he's clearly sent a military shipment. Yeah, I was going to say another thing that could potentially be a little bit dumb with Sevastopol is uh, you could just uh, place a blockhouse behind your opponent's base instantaneously <laughs> yep you do need to have scouted behind their base do you have to have line of sight or can you build it in the fog of war uh i don't think you need line of sight i wonder what happens if you place it and there's already a building foundation there imagine uh, that just gets cancelled probably yeah i would imagine so like when you try and build a trading post uh but they've already built the mm -hmm. trading post okay 10 cossacks coming in there's only two sepoy here yeah 10 cossacks on the going way. to be kiting away though Conqueror. Uh, I like the... I like Conqueror's adaptations. At the very start, he was just like sent these these super long game decks. He's like, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go take. Oh, I love the shadows on this map. I'm gonna take the game all the way, you know, to the late game. But here he's just like, nah, not gonna send villages. Just gonna all in aggression. That seems to be how you win games in the double shipments pack. But uh, it looks like the musketeers at home, the sepoy there, are able to deflect the cossacks. They're not gonna want to go in without the support of the musketeers, which they are uh, trying to pull towards them. Yep, eight Cossacks coming in behind this as well. Uh, but uh, I'm not sure how effective this is going to be. Looks like they're going to get onto that house. Houses, of course, not a lot of hit points uh, for India as their houses are cheaper than other civilizations. That's sort of the trade-off there. So it will go down pretty quickly. Uh, not quite going to house him, though. And this is, uh, for the moment, a pretty scary army. Looks like a wall going up. Not quite going to be completed. Could siege down the other wall segment potentially pretty easily as it's not fully constructed. Uh, 26 strelets coming in. Diplomatic intrigue as well for Tit. Uh, so not a very immediate shipment. Not a very quick, uh, quickly paying off shipment for him. But with the town center fire, the wall, the agri fort. And, every, and the potential for Minutemen and everything in here. Uh, Conqueror won't be committing super, super hard to this. Yep. Looks like, though, three military shipments in a row. This is going to be it for military. He pretty much has, you know, very, very little economy behind this. Uh, this is all shipments. Look at this army. 26 Strelitz, a ton of Cossacks. Yeah, he's trained a few Musketeers as well. But uh, the question is now, can Tit hold this? He sent some fairly slow shipments. If, mm. if he can turn them into military, uh, should be good. Bear in mind, not a lot of siege on uh, these units here. Looks like uh, three cavalry coming out. The, uh, the the gardeners from the Ottoman consulate there. He's got another three in queue as well. Uh, probably another 20 seconds before those arrive, however. Right. And I imagine he's... a shipment as well is going to be popping. Otherwise, he wouldn't want to be taking this fight. They could spawn at the Agra Fort. Or maybe he's just trying to scare Conqueror away by saying, look, I could have eight Sowars about to pop. How do you feel about that? Doesn't look like that's the case, though. More Garden is arriving. Yes, absolutely. We're trying to come forward. Actually... Really nice stomp there. Uh, he does have another shipment on the way, though. Just looking at his experience, looks like they're... it's probably going to be a unit but of some kind, but... Uh, yeah, looks like Conqueror are going to be okay that trade. Uh, a little bit laggy, apparently, fortunately. But uh, yeah, it is going to be the 8 Soar shipment coming in. Uh, second batch of Gardeners popping out as well. So, army is definitely looking uh, pretty good for Tit off of that shipment there. Uh, this could be risky. Could be. Here we go, though. Committing to this house. 
Yeah, House does go down. Maybe that's what he needs to stop more military shipments being sent. Actually, Tit, uh, he's now on 90 pops. So he's just popped there, but the Sowers trying to find their way onto the infantry there. They've got a... Looks like the Musk... Okay, they're doing quite well. The cavalry snaring these units. They're finding it hard to escape, and he's trying to slowly creep away. Russia could be stuck here. There's a lot of cavalry. Not a lot of anti-cavalry either, and Ruskets are not the best... Uh, not the best answer to cav either, so gonna get chased down here and so are is of course with the additional speed compared to other cavalry are very very good at chasing units down in the situation this could potentially be the end of the series as india is going to come off of this fight with a huge military advantage there's no more military shipments left for conqueror um he's not aging or anything like that he just sent a, uh, a wood shipment that, uh, you know, he's only gathered up part of it, but there's not really a lot he can really invest uh, into that right now. Yeah, all the military cleaned up there. And now behind this, it looks like Tit's stronger recall. Oh, oh, there it is. <laughs> there it is. Sevastpol, instant blockhouse. He's going to buy himself some time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's so confused. <laughs> There we go. There's the card that's gonna that's gonna save the day. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Instant training walls. He's gonna keep this guy locked up, and uh, he's not gonna be able to do anything. I don't know though. It still requires a ton of wood to do this, which is. Uh, it's true. Deal. It's it's gonna take a long time. He could keep these units locked down for a long time though. Um. <laughs> this is so. <laughs> Like, oh, I ridiculous. Continue, but he's still got a ton of score on him. I think, what's the play then? Do you just go up to uh, industrial, get something that's super good against siege? Uh, obviously keep well, I'm siege. Not, I'm, not, I'm not sure, because you've got to keep chopping wood if you want to keep these units locked up, right? Like, no, no, I mean for India. What's his What's his play? I, I'm, I'm thinking you go up to the industrial age for really, really strong siege, and then uh, you should be fine against all of these randomly popping walls here. Some musketeers mm. here. They can just escape through the blockhouse. Yeah, they're 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 just trying to buy time, really. <laughs> but yeah, I guess uh, you just need to drag this out to late game somehow if you're Russia or something like that. Yeah, but India still has the stronger economy, I think. And remember, like these walls are costing him a lot of wood. It's not like he can train units behind this whilst he's doing it. Yeah, it looks like uh, Tit's gonna start working his way back towards his base, where that uh, town center radius will prevent. A uh, conqueror from instantaneously walling him. That's true, yeah. I think, um, although these blockhouses are really expensive compared to the walls, I think he's placing them just so he can maintain vision of um, of this army and therefore um, continue placing uh, walls effectively as walls don't have a lot of HP. I suppose sieging the walls does still give him... Look, this is so dumb. <laughs> Look yeah. at, uh, the walls, sieging the walls does still grant him vision of the army that's sieging it, but. That's <clears throat> great. Regardless. You keep, and you can, you can place the walls so effectively wherever they are. You can just place another wall behind them. So, but, you know, the, part of the downside <laughs> to this is you can never delete the wall pillars in this, uh, in this way. So your walls are actually more expensive than uh, you maybe would like. Oh no, not enough wood to finish the wall. Uh, he's gonna get through. The straight. army has escaped. <laughs> but that locked him down for a couple of minutes, but now he's up to the Fortress Age. Uh, looks like he'll be sitting back for a, a little bit as he uh, builds up his strength, sends some of those uh, nice Fortress Age shipments such as 14 Urumi or 6 Mahouts. Oh my god, Germany. Uh, pardon me, India. Yeah, Arumi is a really strong shipment here. They cost food, you're getting double of them. And also, anything that costs resources and you're getting double of is strong. So, Mahouts, and if this were, say, Ottoman Spahis, things like that. But uh, what do you do as India now? You know your opponent can train these instant training walls, but uh, and, and you can be stopped at any moment. Do you have to invest in, like, siege? Is he going to build a castle? And Yeah, that's no, a town center. I'm not sure. I mean, I guess he could send... No, he doesn't have siege elephants in his deck. Four siege elephants would have been a really nice card. Um, oh, apparently if you place a building on top of a foundation, it just gets placed inside <laughs> the building. <laughs> Well, there's the answer to that question. <laughs> so they're just going to be set. <laughs> That's so... <laughs> uh, uh... Oh, that's such a gimmick. Oh, but he's got a settler walking through. 
that was probably tasked to build those buildings. Um, man, that's a that's very silly. Such, such a funny card, but he's really far behind though. He's still in the colonial age. He's down seventy score. Nowhere near aging yet. Uh, looks like siege elephants are in queue actually at yeah. the castle. They seem like a uh, for tit. So <laughs> he's going to be placing these walls surrounding um, the army, but. He's keeping up in economic population. I guess Russia just does. Yeah, that. but I mean, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know. Looks like, like he's gonna be finishing up the walls up here. So he's really gonna be turtling up for the remainder of this game yeah. until uh, his economy can catch up. But it's gonna be a long, long road to get back into this game. Seven hundred coin now coming in that will allow him to age up potentially. There is a siege elephant out now, so these walls will be going down significantly more quickly. That's than before, great. which will force Conqueror to continue investing uh, resources into that over and over yeah, and over. And uh, do pretty much a quarter of the wall's health every shot, so he's going to be able to clean through these pretty quick. He just needs four elephants, and he can take down walls pretty much instantly. But uh, look at the score. Titch is so far ahead here, and if Conqueror, yeah, he's sort of keeping up economically, still slightly behind, but if he wants to keep this army at bay, he has to keep investing wood in the walls, and it's just not really going to be doable. Lots of strelets on the board, but they're not upgraded, unlike the Dis Disciplined Sepoy and the Disciplined Gurkha. Imagine how different this game would have been if he'd sent Sevastopol a little bit earlier while he still had his army, and he could have just walled uh, could have just walled all the things for that, uh, that became a problem. Like, you yeah. know, walled off the army while he's being chased or something. And, and build, like, a gate funny. or something and escape so, through it. Wait, so what happens if you, if you just lose vision of this army, like, right here? Like, if they walk out of line of sight and you place, like, a couple of blockhouses on top of where the, the army is? House? Yeah, I think they get trapped inside it. I mean, they could probably siege their way out pretty easily, but it'd be pretty funny anyway. That's definitely some way to stop the, the units from moving. God, that's broken. I think they were uh, tit doing exactly what he needs to do, adding in the yeah, siege the, elephants. This, the siege elephants will be dealing with this uh, rather effectively. Um, no shipment available for Conqueror either, so these walls will be the only thing between him and... Uh... <laughs> you can even place walls. <laughs> oh, you can you can just place them on top of units as well, by the looks of it. As long as the on foundation... On top of your own units, I yeah, suppose. Yeah, on your own units. As long as the foundation goes down, it will just build, which is interesting. He really he really needs to get, like, Bastion or something if he wants to keep using these walls, but that's such an expensive upgrade. He doesn't really have the wood for it. He's Just look at look at his, his resources right now. I, I think this is probably going to be the end of the game. He can only... He can only continue walling him for so long, and he doesn't really have enough resources to continue doing so. Right. He has got veteran strelets in now, which is going to help a little bit, but they're still very, very weak units. At least they uh, are pretty good against Sepoy, but there's so many Indian units here. Keep, he's getting pushed back. Walls keep getting replaced, but uh, the elephant's making short work of that. Must be, and just never able to have enough wood to keep up with all these walls. I think it's over. Yeah, it looks like uh, it most likely Tit will be taking the series off the back of this game. Um... He's just very far ahead uh, militarily and economically. Uh, Miniman coming out to try and hold this push, sort of, but at the end of the day, it's not going to be enough, I think. Yeah, inspiration. inspiration coming in as well, just to clean up these uh, remaining units. Let's take a look at the British East India Company shipment. Increases pretty much everything by 10%, so uh, it will be 20%. Seems oh, pretty good. There's a fort. There's a fort somewhere on the map. Oh, there it is, Fort Wagon. Wait. It affects forts. It's, did did the wagon even have to? Oh my God. Yeah, the wagon just. Wait. What? The fort? They're still. Wait. This is, is it balanced. <laughs> is this infinite forts? What the? F really? Okay. If the fort goes down, can he just uh, replace it again? Yeah, he can. Uh, the build limit is still one. Okay, fine. Right, the build limit is still one. You can't just place infinite forts, but he doesn't. Ha he can ha every time the fort dies, he can make a new one. This is like playing a guy with map hacks or something, or like Mosbar hacks. Please, please, please replace the. Oh, I want to see the forts wanna... go down again. I'm gonna ask him. Would it let you make another fort wagon? didn't get consumed question mark no it wouldn't okay
Okay, so he can he can rebuild it. Okay, so if the fort you can only make one fort due to the build limit, but if the fort dies, you can make another fort because the wagon isn't consumed. Interesting. That's a that's a balanced interaction right there. So you Man, what oh uh, what he really needed was uh like actually does Russia have a two like do they have blockhouse wagon cards at all? Oh, I'm gonna go no, check. They, they don't have blockhouse wagons. Oh, that's too bad. But... If if you could get a blockhouse wagon, you could just have infinite blockhouses yeah but you could get to the industrial age and ship uh cast remitation which ships you a fort wagon increases the fort wagon build limit as well and then you could just place two forts and they'd constantly every time one dies it could be replaced uh but yeah if they had a blockhouse wagon you could place seven like... blockhouses instantly that's insane it looks like they do have a two blockhouse shipment but it's in age three instead of in age uh, uh I see. two i see what about town center wagons? What? How? What does? I think service pool does affect town center wagons. It do, it does, yeah. So it, you can only use block houses, forts, walls, and town centers. Okay. <clears throat> that sounds like a really balanced card. So you managed to get all of this stuff out. Yeah. So you send it. You, <laughs> yeah. If you get up to the fortress age, you ship the no. Yeah. You ship a TC wagon, get a covered wagon, and then just make three town centers <laughs> instantly. Yep. And then. Uh... You can be as aggressive as you want with these buildings too. Who cares if they go down? They're free anyway. That's true. place instantaneously anywhere on the map, even right. inside your opponent. You could place your town center inside your opponent's town center, well, although not the starting one. Not the but starting yeah. one. Yeah, but you could place forts and shit right outside their base, and as soon as they destroy it, another one would pop up. Just replace it. Yeah, there's so much. I'm. We have to do this at some point in the future. Uh with Azamk. I'm imagining a few months from now, but I want to see what he can come up with because I imagine that guy has put a lot of thought into this. He wasn't available for this one, but uh, we'll get him, and I'm going to see how many broken things he can come up with, like fort wagons and all of this nonsense. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, Tit does win Saturday Smackdown, pardon me, Sunday Smackdown Smackdown number 6. Double shipments, hash 2. Picking That's himself up. Five, actually, did it? What did I say? You said number six. Oh yes, number five. Yeah, you're right. Number six though will be the one uh, which people can vote on. So head on over to the Discord and vote on the Smackdowns. But that is it from me and Mito. Well done, Tits. Pretty interesting series. And yes, Conqueror could have actually won that Spain mirror, I think, if he hadn't sent the thousand wood. Certainly would have been closer. It goes to show, like, military unit shipments are just so strong in this format because of the immediacy of them. Anything that's even just a little bit slow is just too slow. Like crates. Yeah, they, defi they definitely seem very, very strong. And tech's even slower than that. But uh was interesting. If Conqueror, I mean, in the first couple of games, he he, he just didn't, he didn't, he sort of, his builds were not, right? He was d doing completely the wrong things. But he, he learned pretty quick. And in the games after that, uh, performed very well. But I wonder... You know, if he hadn't lost those first two games just on the learning curve where this series could have gone. But uh, I'd say quite a quite a good series. Quite pleased with that. But yes, thank you very much for watching, everybody. That's it from me and Mito. And we'll see you for the one you vote on next time. Adios.